Greetings everybody. Today I am going to be doing some history, mechanics, tips and tricks with the M9130 Mosin Nagant. Most of these tips and tricks are going to be fairly universal across Mosins because they tend to be pretty similar. So first off, an introduction. What is the M9130 Mosin? Well, the M9130 was derived from the original Mosin, the 1891 pattern. Now, the 1891 pattern was adopted in 1891, made by a Sergei Mosin. At this time, Russia was still czarist, um, and they, and if you look at a Berdan II rifle or Berdan I rifle, the bolt is eerily similar. So, yeah, the Berdan was a, well, black powder, single shot, uh, you know, black powder cartridge, big bore, slow moving, round bullet, you know, very typical, it's like 43 caliber, whereas the Russian, the Tsar's Russians would say 4.3 line. Anyway, uh, you might still know the name uh, Berdan from Berdan Primed. Anyway, just describing a style of primer. Regardless, so the Russians had the M91, the, the original M91, for a very long time until the 1930s. So before the 1930s, obviously, there was the Soviet Revolution and they became communist and all of that. And they wanted to rearm and re-equip and refurbish equipment and all of that stuff. They wanted to upgrade. So what did they do with the Mosins? Well, it's quite simple. They took some a few inches off of the barrel, not a whole lot, a change there. Um, they didn't go with a universal rifle uh, design. Uh, they just didn't. And they changed the sights. The original sights were these stepladder things, and I'll put a picture up of it. And this was uh, zeroed in something called arshins. Now, one arshin is about 28 inches. It's sort of like a soldier's pace, but I, I digress. The front sight was also a little bit different. Um, for the pictures I've seen, the front sight looks just like a blade, like a barley corn or blade notch like a blade sight, um, not a, uh, a hooded sight. Anyway, that's really the main differences. Uh, the design was relatively similar, but they also changed the bullet. Now, it was still chambered in the 7.62 by 54 rimmed cartridge. So, uh, this is some modern uh, steel case. It's quite tapered, big rim, but it's not as tapered and rimmed as the... 8mm Lebel cartridge that gave the France a serious, serious amount of problems. Just, that cartridge was such a fucking bottleneck for the French. If they had more time, they could have designed a way better cartridge and a better rifle. Nothing against the 1886 Lebel, I want one, but still, like, it wasn't great. Now, some people would say that a rimmed cartridge isn't ideal. Not, yeah, I guess, but... The Russians made it work, and they still make it work. This ammunition is not some old proprietary cartridge. It's modern. It's still being used in military purposes and military applications, because this is effectively Soviet, or I guess, Russian 308. This is very, very, very comparable to 308. Now, some people say, no, it isn't. 308 is obviously more powerful. No, it really isn't. This is this right here is 148 grain round, moved about 2,700 feet per second. The moder the uh, military load was 182 grain round, moving about maybe around 2,700 feet per second. It could be slightly slower, but still very comparable to 308. Anyway, moving on from that, so they redesigned uh, the sights on the Mosin. Now these are actually uh, uh, these are actually graduated in meters. Just, Standard meters, no weird arshins or anything because in the 1920s they went to the metric system. Now, some people will say that the Mosin sites are bad. I completely disagree. I think that the Mosin sites are adequate and they're pretty damn good in my personal opinion. Now, keep in mind, I've shot over a thousand rounds through this thing so far. I've had this rifle for like two years now and I've shot it a lot and I know this rifle in and out and you know all that so that's basically the history they move on to make tens and tens of millions like 30 million something of uh the mosin the mosin platform the sniper mosins the mosin pu's had a precision machined barrel even and a pacific sniper loading and they were made to a much higher quality than everything else that was being produced during world war ii 
So I'm just going to say that they probably had the most accurate sniper rifle of World War II that would actually saw active service. Anyway, so the Mosin action is a cock and open. Some people say that the Mosin action is hard, like you basically need the strength of a forklift to operate the entire thing. Shut the fuck up, no you don't. It is a fairly simple action, there isn't a whole lot going on. Um, the safety does exist. Ugh. What you do is you pull the bolt back, the, 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 you pull this back, and then you rotate it over to lock the safety, to basically lock the bolt. I'm not going to do that because that is hard to do. Um, you can also decock it, so that's cool. The last thing I'm going to talk about before I talk about general tips and tricks with a Mosin that are not going to involve any sort of bubbying or FUD lore um, is with the stripper clips. So, some people will complain that the Mosin stripper clips are hard to use. They're really not. Now, you put it into the feed lips, right? Now, if your clip is loose enough, you can actually just Mauser style it in. But, one thing you can definitely do is this action. How is that hard? Well, I guess people are just pussies. Also, don't do what I did um, indoors. I was just doing it as demonstration, so YouTube, be chill. This rifle was not going to go off. I know what I'm doing. I am a quasi-expert on Mosins. Sort of. So, that is not hard to load. Now, if you have a really... Uh, now, with, these are repro clips. What you should do when you get them, load them up and flex them. Just do like that. Just a little bit of flexing. Once you get them worked in, they're going to be a lot easier. Some of my clips are as easy to use as Mauser style clips. So you can load a Mosin fairly quickly. Anyway, let me actually go ahead and show you a little bit of markings before I talk about some more tips and tricks with the Mosin. So those are the markings. There's not a whole lot, but that guy the star with the fletched arrow, that is a Tula logo. That's the Tula factory logo. You see the date of production, 1938-50. Now, what does that dash 50 mean? That means that this rifle, this particular one, was factory refurbed in 1950. In, 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 in the 1950. In 1950, I was going to say the 50s, but yeah. Um, serial number. Uh, I don't really know what that mark means. Or what it signifies, I have absolutely no idea. This particular example is fully matching, so that's really, really neat. And you can see, even though the wood is a bit old, it's all, you know, in very good shape. There's even still bluing and all of that. There's no damage anywhere. So my, uh, so my rifle is a very good example. Now, what about those tips and tricks I was talking about? Well, this is going to, this is a, uh, it's going to be sort of a controversial one. Now, bear with me on this. This is, this is going to be some crazy taboo under, under the, uh, under the, 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 the table um, tips here. Okay? Don't tell anyone. When you get a Mosin, are you to saying with me? Take it apart. Stay with me, and I mean fully take it apart, including the bolt and trigger pack, and clean and oil it, and then put it all back together. I know, I know that is that is a that is a ridiculous thing to say. That that I might as well have been saying something just truly heinous there. I I'm so, I, I know I'm joking a lot, and I'm sorry, but this honestly surprises some people. I've talked to some people that own Mosins, and they're like, man, the bolt and trigger just they don't feel quite right. I'm like, have you taken it apart and put and oiled and cleaned, cleaned and oiled? And they're like, no, do it. Guy did it, and he he came back to me a few weeks later and said, holy shit, you're fucking right. This trigger now is like a four and ish pound trigger, and the bolt is super easy to operate. Wow, because it's clean. What a fucking upset. Nobody saw this coming. I'm sorry, I just got to be a bit of an asshole about that. Any of these old surplus rifles, fuck, new rifles, clean and oil them regularly. I don't understand people that never clean their guns. 
always, always, always clean your shit, especially if you're using corrosive ammo because you're going to ruin it and probably hurt yourself because it's going to go boom because barrel obstruction, a.k.a. rust. What are some other tips? Well, first off, you should zero the front sight and you should get a front sight tool. Hold on, let me go grab mine. So, here is the wooden box. I think I've showed this on the channel before. 1945, I don't know what that Cyrillic means. If anybody knows, tell me. And then, we open the box up, and what do we see inside? A sight tool. This is for the M9130. It will not work on the M44 carbine. It might work for the M38 carbine. Now, that scratching there, that was me using a wrench, because I actually underestimated how fine adjustment this sight tool is and how easy it is to use. You can see there are numbers and this entire thing just, it is butter. Look at that. That is, that is really high quality. There's some Cyrillic there. I think, yeah, that, I think that is Cyrillic. Um, it is just, it's heavy, by the way. So I wouldn't recommend keeping this on your rifle's barrel when zeroing, because it will actually mess up the point of impact. Trust me, I've done it. It came uh, again. It, it came like this. Uh, there's a little bit of wax paper. I don't. This original wax paper is, feels exactly like modern wax paper. Um, I don't really know why there's a bit of wood here in this box. Like why? Did, why? Why? <laughs> why that? Anyway, this thing did come a little dirty. It, it had cosmoline on it and stuff. But once we got it cleaned up. Ooh. Wow. And that entire thing just slips over the muzzle. You're going to have to take off the cleaning rod if your Mosin still has a cleaning rod. But if it was factory refurbed, it probably has a cleaning rod. So there's your cleaning rod. Um, I, don't partic I don't use it because I feel like it's not long enough. Um, but that's just me. It probably, it probably is long enough. But no, I'll at least stick with a modern cleaning rod. Um, anyway, that just goes right back into... Where it, went, where it went, and then you screw it back in. Am I doing this the right way? I'll know in a second. I don't think I am. Wait a minute. Am I? There we go. Yep, nice and tight. Now, a few other things I would say, uh, uh, little tips of the moment. If you notice that your hand guard, if your front hand guard is getting a little loose, check the springs, because there are springs here. You might have to take them out, stretch them a bit, and then it will keep everything nice and snug. I had to do that because this would actually work its way, work its way up here. So that's a problem. Another thing you should do, I would not recommend sanding the wood. Just put a clear coat lacquer on the wood and you're good to go. Especially if you live in a state like where I live, Maryland or Florida or wherever else where it gets really hot and humid. You're going to want to do that so you can prevent swelling and... Um, other wood damage. Double check the bluing on your rifle. If the bluing looks a little messed up on some places, don't don't be afraid to slightly like touch it up. Again, this is to prevent any sort of damage from humidity. So it would be nice to keep the original finish. Mine has the original finish. Mine also has import marks and this one was imported by PW Arms Redmond. So Cool. Um, and they actually put the correct caliber on here. 7.62 by 54 rimmed. Uh, it's not, it doesn't say rimmed, it says R. Anyway, that's pretty much the Mosin Nagant. It is a fantastic rifle. It is a great shooter. It's a fun time. The 7.62 by 54 R cartridge has a nice punch to it. You could definitely use this hunting. You could use a carbine for hunting. Um, especially, you, you know, you got to have like 180 grain soft points or something like that. You know, hunting ammo. Uh, soft points, hollow points, that kind of stuff. Which exist. This ammo is also cheap, which is one of the reasons why I got the Mosin. The, the ammunition... I, don't, I didn't mean to do that, but yeah, it does that. Uh, the ammunition and the rifle were actually very affordable. Mine was $418 for this completely matching Tula example that was factory refurbed. Absolutely Phenomenal. You're not getting a good Mauser for that much. 
An 8mm Mauser is expensive. Especially modern 8mm Mauser. Oh my god, why? Whatever, I'll stick to surplus for 8 Mauser. Um, for 54 rimmed, I do want some surplus. There's some surplus out there I want. Like the M30 ball ammo, the like Yugoslavian M30 ball. I want to try that. Oh, and by the way, the butt pad, the butt plate even matches. People complain about the recoil of this puppy. What recoil? This thing, this thing actually is the softest shooting full power rifle that I have in my collection. My Arasaka is a close second, and my harshest recoiling is actually my, my uh, Mauser, in 8 Mauser, uh, my Car 98K, my Kriegsmoldau. It's a fantastic rifle. The Mosin kicks ass. It's badass. It's fun to shoot. I've had no real issues with it. Uh, zeroing the sight was easy as fuck with that really nice sight tool. One day I will like double check the zero to make sure it's actually like fully, fully zero. But I've hit bullseyes at, 50, at 100 yards of this thing. So I'm going to basically say it's zero. Now, one thing you do have to keep in mind, when you shoot this thing a lot, this, this gets hot. Don't touch that. The barrel bands get hot. Don't touch that. Um, the cleaning rod turns into a fucking molten iron poker. Don't touch that. Don't touch any metal bits other than the bolt when you're firing this thing a lot. So, um, just, just fair warning. Because I have accidentally touched this and I was like, ay! Uh, after shooting 50 rounds, it was you, you, it, untouchable. You, no, you can't touch it. It would like, it would, like start grilling my hand. It, would, it would turn into a griddle. Comrade, you have griddle, you have Mosin. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how hot the DPMs got. Probably very hot. Uh, anyway, it's a fantastic rifle. Love the cartridge. Love the history. I love Russian stuff. I love Comblock stuff. It is a beauty. It is an absolute beauty. You cannot tell me this thing is not beautiful, right? Right? I hope you can tell me this thing is beautiful, because it is. I know it is. People need to appreciate the Mosin a gaunt more. And I hope this little tips and tricks video helped some of you with your Mosins. Keep in mind, all Mosins are effectively the same. There's some variations. There's the Estonian ones. There's the, uh, there's the um, Finnish ones. A um, bunch of different countries that make Mosins. You know, they're all practically the same. So it's just little variations every now and then different countries. Uh, but this is a genuine Russian Mosin. I don't know if it's all service. I don't know if it's all like live combat. It might have just been a training rifle, drill rifle. I don't know. I don't think uh, there's any sort of thing as a as a drill or training Mosin. If they exist, they're probably super scarce. Anyway, it is a fantastic, fantastic rifle. I love it to pieces. I will never part with this old girl. Her name is Olga. And my God, does Olga shoot very well. Very straight. Very awesome. So much fun. Regardless, that's all for me with the Mose and the Gun. I think I'm going to do this for each one of my rifles. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, in Trilby, we trust.